thank you everyone for taking time to attend today's presentation. Um, as Fran mentioned, we're going to be discussing zirconia or Zerlux transition centering techniques for perfection. And um, I hope you enjoy this. To start, we're going to talk about the material. Uh, Zerlux transitions is a premium zirconia for anterior and posterior restorations. It has 1200 megapascal strength with 48% translucency. It is a pre-centered yttria stabilized tetragonal zirconia polycrystalline ceramic, a YTZP, otherwise known as a 4Y, and a commercially pure zirconia. Transitions has a unique colloid processing um, of this material that mimics nature without compromising strength. It is manufactured with a smaller particle size, allowing for layering of materials during production that eliminates lines of demarcation seam with some other multi-layered zirconia blanks. Transitions has a patented smart incisal incorporating a bluish gray effect in the top third of the disc, which reduces the white value and closely mimics natural teeth. Transitions is processed with higher chroma in the cervical area uh, that decreases towards the incisal. And it's manufactured to have a well-controlled enlargement factor of approximately 1.21 or 21%. Each blank and box is labeled with its individual precisely determined enlargement factor. And indications for this zirconia are full contour anterior and posterior crowns, bridges, inlays, and onlays. It's used for single tooth and bridge frameworks in the anterior and posterior, up to 14 units. And this material is manufactured in the USA and it's one zirconia with a wide range of applications. Hey everybody, we have our first polling question coming to you. If you would kindly just give us your answers. And as we're waiting for these answers to come in, uh, the unique thing with this Zerlux transitions is it is one very strong zirconia and it can be used in a wide range of applications, which many labs have consolidated their uh, zir or, or, uh, zirconia portfolio and reduced the number of brands that they need uh, for day-to-day -day production. Uh, there we go. So as far as the technical data, Zerlex transitions is a high performance material with a much smaller particle size compared to other materials. This provides many unique benefits such as higher strength and translucency ratio and integrity when finishing margins with a smoother polished like surface. Um, and here you can see the, the properties of it, the coefficients of thermal expansion, flexural strength, hardness, and solubility. Zerlex Transitions is available in 16 Vita classic shades and one bleach shade, OM2. Discs are 98 millimeter diameter and available in 14, 18, and 22 millimeter thicknesses. Uh, we are also currently working to expand this portfolio. Again, here are the indications are full contour, anterior and posterior crowns, bridges, inlays and onlays, single tooth and bridge frameworks in the anterior and posterior that can be cement or screw retained. Uh, the framework design for Zerlex transitions, when designing a full contoured restoration, it's important that minimum thickness requirements are met, which are seen in table one below. Note that one millimeter of occlusal and axial wall thickness are considered ideal for full contoured zirconia restorations. And what's meant by this is to get the ideal shading and, and light transmission, a thickness of one millimeter is ideal. That being said, uh, with this material, you can drop below those thicknesses. However, it will impact the overall aesthetics of the restoration. However, you will maintain the strength of the material. Um, and the chart here shows that we can go from one millimeter to a half a millimeter 
uh, on both the axial wall and occlusal surfaces. A few tips and considerations. Um, if you are milling your zirconia wet today, ensure that clean distilled water is used. Um, be sure that the Xerlex or any zirconia material is properly dried before sintering. Uh, use a calibrated sintering furnace, which we'll talk about a little further along in this presentation. Purge your sintering furnace as part of regular maintenance. Purge your sintering trays regularly and use a piece of white zirconia to absorb any contaminants when doing a purging of your, your sintering trays. Also replace beads when they start to discolor. Um, a recommended purging cycle for Centering furnace is three degrees centigrade up to 1600 degrees or 50 degrees higher than your centering cycle and hold this for four hours. Um, for material considerations or, or contraindications, uh, improper framework design or below the minimum thickness recommendations would not be advised and, and you, chances are you will run into some problems. Sintering temperatures also have an impact on shade. Um, standard sintering temperatures for zirconia range between 14 and 1600 degrees. Firing temperature too low would result in opaque looking restorations lacking vitality. Firing temperatures too high will gray out or lower the value and the chroma will burn out. Uh, Zerlux transition shades run a bit lighter, so a high temperature adjustment and sintering down to 1430 will help get you started. Um, nine hour sintering or, or standard sintering cycle is recommended for larger bridges or cases with thicker pontics. This also incorporates a slower cooling into the program cycle, reducing stress on any bridge or larger um, frameworks. Uh, it is with the nine hour cycle, you can pretty much put as many units in as your furnace capacity will allow. Um, and it is kind of a, a pretty standard program. Uh, there are also no limits to the number, actually I'm repeating myself a little bit, uh, to the number of restorations when sintering with a nine hour cycle. The temperature impact on shade. Here we show the same material, but fired in four different temperature settings. Um, with the higher temperature, chroma will be decreased. Decreased chroma will make the white value go up, making your crown look whitish, which we're seeing with the 1550 firing temperature. Different ovens have different temperature profiles, meaning the actual temperature performance inside the heating chamber is different. Uh, a temperature adjustment may be needed if your restoration comes out lighter than the shade tab. Once you've found the right temperature for your oven for any shade, uh, using A2 as an example here, the rest of the sh shades will automatically uh, be coordinated due to the Xerlex transition shade system. So once you have your furnace calibrated and the proper firing high temperature, you can run through any of the 16 Vita shades and, and produce consistent results. Here we're showing uh, three different sintering cycles. Um, so restorations can be sintered in any dental zirconia sintering furnace, provided it can run the re recommended sintering cycles shown here. Um, the first one we have is a four hour cycle, and this is an optimal program for quick sintering of single crowns up to 30 units. The second cycle is a seven hour, which is an optimal program for single crowns that exceed 30 units, as well as three unit bridges. So we always want to increase the, the sintering cycle when we're going to larger um, substructures or, or prosthesis bridges. Um, so a two and a half hour, this also, the time increase is due to it, the holding time is increased to two and a half hours that produce a pontic area with much better aesthetics than a two hour holding time since the value is decreased. And below this, we have the nine hour, which is pretty much a universal uh, program for single crowns and bridges. Uh, the extended cooling time here ensures minimal distortion and stress-free cooling of the bridge restoration. So this also has a slower cooling cycle.
Now we have a, another poll question that we could launch here, if that's okay with you, James. Sure. Okay, this one is, do you still use white zirconia and a dipping process? If you would kindly give us your feedback. With this question, um, if you are using a white zirconia and dipping, do you also have a, a purge cycle as part of your sintering process? And, and what this does typically is reduce or it, it eliminates or extrudes gases from the firing chamber, uh, which reduces the life of your heating elements. Great, so it looks like everyone answered. Okay. Thank you. We'll talk here a little bit about finishing and calibration. So it's recommended that adjustments to zirconia restorations uh, be completed prior to sintering. Only use suitable grinding instruments at low speed and light pressure to avoid flaking, chipping, or cracking of the restoration. Uh, carefully separate the milled restoration from the starting blank using a fine diamond disc or burr, uh, and then smooth out the sprue or attachment area using a similar instrument. Make any adjustments to the milled restoration as necessary. And then after finishing, clean the milled restoration using compressed air or water. Um, if the restoration is wet from a steam cleaner or what have you, it should be dried prior to full sintering. And the recommendation drying time uh, for this is 30 minutes under a heat lamp. After this time, you should be able to safely start the sintering process. Um, regarding calibration, it's always important when using uh, any zirconia to know where your furnace is running. A lot of times the display may show 1500 degrees and your furnace is gonna run hotter or cooler. Um, so first, step and part of just good maintenance overall is, is to have a calibrated furnace. Um, use a ceramic temperature test ring, also known as a ferro ring, uh, and this will measure the exact temperature of your furnace. There's no translucency change between a temperature range of 1450 and 1530 with Xerlex transi transitions disc. Um, the standard sintering temperature we recommend typically for this calibration is around 1500 degrees, although you can put these ferro rings in with your current zirconia um, sintering and do a measurement after it runs through its cycle. And then uh, we'll use the firing chart to see what the results are and then make adjustments to your furnace temperature. If your restorations come out light after sintering, then we would recommend lowering the temperature incrementally by 20 degrees. If they come out darker than the shade tab, we would raise the temperature incrementally by 20 degrees. Here is a, in the right-hand corner, we have a, a, a digital caliper that has a fired ferrule ring and the measurement is 19.47 that we'll refer to a little bit further down. And so with the ferro rings, you typically will receive a temperature table because these are unique to each batch of ferro rings processed in order to have the precision that they need. So I would recommend using a, a, a 1450 to 1500 degree temperature as a baseline calibration or use your current zirconia material and sintering program. Uh, the example that was just shown above was fired at 1500 degrees and the ferro ring measurement was 19.47 millimeters, which corresponds um, on this firing table to 1519 degrees. So that's showing us that we're thinking we're firing at 1500 degrees, but we're actually 19 degrees hotter, which definitely will impact the shade. So we would then go into the furnace settings 
and drop that high temperature from 1500 to 1481 to compensate for that 19 degree differential. And that will give us the ideal temperature of 1500 degrees. If you need any support with this, um, as you go through it or, or calibrating your furnace, feel free to call Zahn's technical support and any of the agents would be happy to help you or you could ask for James and I'm more than happy to help you. Hey, James, we have another poll question. This one is a two yep. part. So I'm gonna launch that and here it comes. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for your feedback, everybody. The first is how often do you calibrate your sintering furnace? And the second is, do you calibrate for regular maintenance or when you have a problem? Interesting to see what the answers will be. Mm -hmm. And this question, I would say, it kind of depends on how often you're sintering. Are you doing it daily, multiple cycles a day? Are you doing it, you know, one or two cycles a week? As a baseline, I would not calibrate less than once a month. Um, if I'm centering more, I would probably do it every two weeks, um, but I certainly would not wait uh, until I had a problem. Should be part of the regular maintenance, keeping it clean. And Thank you everybody for your feedback. So as we move forward, uh, wait. for furnace calibration, if you're not familiar with it or, or wonder where to get these ferro rings, Zahn offers a Zerlex transitions calibration set. I've added the article number here and they run around $25. These include four ferro rings and a temperature table, uh, which is unique to each batch of these ferro rings that's manufactured. And you would say simply take one of these discs, if you will, and place it in with your milled elements and fire it and then just measure it when it comes out and then make adjustments accordingly. Um, a few more tips as we move forward. Uh, you would not want to center Zerlex transitions along with any elements that have been uh, stained with coloring liquids because shade contamination may occur. It has a high probability. Uh, two and a half point five hours or two and a half hours of holding time will produce a Pontic area with much better aesthetics than a two hour holding time since the value is decreased. And follow the centering instructions of the corresponding furnace with regard to placement of the frameworks and furnace accessories such as crucibles, centering beads, centering trays, et cetera. If you're using a crucible or dish, it's recommended to center Zerlex transitions restorations with the cover. If using a centering furnace with the molly, denim, the silicate heating elements, uh, a cleaning cycle should be run if it's the first use of the new heating elements or if centered frameworks have come out discolored or yellowish. So you'd wanna just run and, and re-glass those. The recommended purge or cleaning cycle would be 20 degrees centigrade a minute up to 1600 degrees and hold for two hours followed by a natural cool. Uh, the furnace should be empty to run this cycle. And the purpose of the cleaning cycle is to generate a protective silica coating on the heating elements as necessary to prevent discoloration or contamination of restorations. Um, in addition, transitions, Zerlex transitions high temperature adjustment in the sintering program from 1480, which is in the IFU to 1430 has shown improved shade results. So I would use this as a starting point and make adjustments from here. Okay, so we have another polling question and this one is on purging your furnace and degassing. So I'm gonna launch this one. Thank you everyone for your feedback.
you know, results are coming in pretty interesting. Thank you, everyone. So a few post-centering tips. Um, if adjustments to the zirconia are necessary, it's recommended to use only grinding instruments indicated for zirconia. When grinding, use little or no pressure to reduce heat generated, which can cause fractures in the framework. Ensure that a minimum thickness requirement and connector dimensions are maintained. And uh, there are tables in the IFU, one of them I showed previously, um, that you should follow. And it's critical that the connector areas are not touched by a separating disc or grinding tool. Uh, this could compromise the strength of the zirconia framework and, and potentially cause fractures. Always use water during grinding to keep the restorations cool. And before staining, surface of the zirconia restoration must be sandblasted with alumina not coarser than 50 microns. After sand, sandblasting, we would steam clean or ultrasonically clean the framework for 15 minutes. And it's very important that the surface of the zirconia is free from dirt, milling dust or residue and oily, greasy contaminants, um, or you'll have contamination. When applying stains to the surface of the zirconia, only use those intended for this purpose. And lastly, if you're using Xerlux transitions, it's a little bit different than some of the other zirconias on the market. And this one uh, requires vacuum. So applying vacuum during the stain and glaze for Xerlux transitions is required. If the vacuum is not used, the restorations will likely be more opaque than desired and your shade will be too light. It's important to have enough cooling time after glazing to avoid possible micro cracks in the zirconia restoration. Cooling too fast may result in cracks in the areas between thick pontics and thin axial walls uh, of the crowns or bridges. And here I'm showing the parameters for the glazing, um, which is basically just preheat to 403, dry it for six minutes, 100 degrees per minute and up to 790 and start your vacuum at 1450 and end it at 1789. Hold for a minute and 30 seconds and then standard slow cooling. If you need any additional support with furnace calibration or are interested in this Xerlux transitions material, um, you can call our technical support line from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The support number is 800-496-9500, extension 9. You can also email us at zonsupport at henryshine.com. This will generate a support ticket for an agent to follow up. Uh, please or provide a clear description of the support issue and your contact information. And again, the Xerlex Transitions Calibration Ring Set is a 9012645, also known as a ferro ring. And my contact information, if you'd like to email me, is james.byron at henryshine.com. James, thank you so much. I do have all of the results for the polling question. So is it okay if we uh, go over that and you make some uh, comments and remarks? Sure. So as for brands, how many brands of zirconia does you currently use in your lab? It seems that 75% says they use one brand and 25% say they use more than one brand. Wow, that's very interesting. I'm surprised it's that high actually. Yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting results, right? So yeah. the next one is on the sintering and furnace calibration. So it seems that 50% calibrate every other month and the other 50% don't calibrate at all. Okay. Another interesting result. I mean, not calibrating. I mean, how do you, how do you feel about that? Like you said, it should be done 
like monthly or what is what is really yeah i would just so that you know uh where your furnace is running uh comparative to what you're seeing on the display screen so i i find that quite interesting um and then on the second question do you calibrate for regular maintenance or when you have a problem split up the middle again 50 percent for regular maintenance and 50 percent when they have a problem okay not not surprising, but I'd probably recommend just having a, a maintenance program, not only for your sintering furnace, but all of your laboratory equipment, including your mill, uh, and that certainly will extend the life of it. That's something they should like set their calendar, like you know, every fifteenth of the month. Is that something as simple as that? Okay. Yeah, I think that's a great idea, Fran. Uh, that's certainly something that I would do if I had a, a, a laboratory today. I used to have one, and I would do it on a regular basis, and that's that's pretty much how I would do it. Pick a day of the month, and then you know that's a calibration day. Um, you can also do it on a Friday at the end of the day, and and just let it go into the weekend. Come back on Monday morning and, and do your measurements. Excellent. Okay. The next one was: Do you still use white zirconia and a dipping process? It seems that sixty-seven percent said yes, they do, and the third and the next uh, thirty-three percent said no, they do not. Okay. And That's another our, interesting statistic. And our last is, do you purge for your furnace and use a degassing step in sintering? So it, it seems that 25% said, yes, they do. And 75% said, no, they don't. Okay. Again, That's interesting, you, depending on if you are using the white zirconia and the dipping liquids, because mm -hmm. uh, they do produce a, a gas, if you will, as the the fillers or what have you in the colorant are burnt off. And having a furnace with a degas step in the sintering cycle will eliminate those gases for um, continuing on in the process and help extend the life of the heating elements.